Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this tutorial we are going to be looking through how to bake out textures ready for games engines. So this is a request that we've had via our Facebook page. Uh, if you do have any specific requests for tutorials, then do please let us know. You know, message us on Facebook or send us a tweet or something. The links to our uh, Facebook and Twitter will be um, part of our blog or on our website. So do please you know, let us know and we will see what we can do. So as this is going to focus largely on textures, I'm just going to knock up a quick model. Okay, so I'm going to make it really, really basic. Um, I'm just going to make myself a, a super basic little house that I'm going to put in. So it won't take very long to do at all. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I'm just going to create one sort of window here. So it's a kind of little hut type thing, which is fine for me. Okay, there we go. A re really, really basic little building there. Cool. So now to create some textures for it. So color. Uh, I'm going to go to surfaces, I'm going to use the bricks, and then I'm going to just uh, select oop, um, all of the polygons that I want this to apply to. Actually, I might cheat. I might select those two, that and that, and then I will invert the selection. Okay, so selection and then invert. There we go. That gives me everything I want. So I shall just add that. You can see that we've got some interesting warping of that texture. It's because of the way Cinema 4D uses its UVW map. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to change that to cubic. Okay, and then that gives me my look quite nicely. Um, actually, I'm just going to deselect some of those as well. So UL, that and that. There we go. And then with my little tag selected, I'm going to do set selection so that it removes those, it resets that selection. Then I'm going to create a nice white material, that will do. So I'm not going to spend too long on the textures of this. Then I'm going to just select those two and drag that. Okay, and then I'm going to create a tiled material for the top. Surfaces, Ooh, tiles. And then I'm going to choose the, oh, I can't remember what it is, scales. There we go, scales one, because it's easier to adjust. Nice red tiles, and just adjust that gravel and bevel width. Okay, and then I'm going to select my two there and drag and drop. Okay, so I just need to adjust that texture because that's the, uh, the wrong way up for me so cubic gives me a bit of a a better look but isn't quite what I'm after when it comes to that so let's just adjust this ooh 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 there we go may not be the prettiest but it gets me the uh, angle that I want either side so I've got them both facing the correct ways so here I have, I've applied my textures in that sort of fashion. Now, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to ignore the fact that the glass isn't done yet, um, because I shall come to that in a minute. What I need to do is we need to bake this out, okay? That is um, a technical term for sort of forcing an image out of these. So at the moment, they're all being generated by these three textures down here. But a game engine doesn't understand what these three are as such. And it only understands its own internal ones or images that you choose to give it. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to turn this into an image. So clicking the cube, go to Objects, and there we have Bake Object. So if I click that, you then end up with this Bake Object tab, um, sort of pop-up box comes up. And we need a few things that we need to just tick. So I've got single texture, okay, and I'm going to do replace object. That means that when it's produced the baked object, it will remove the non-baked one from here. That's useful when I'm about to export slightly later. 
we need to choose PNG because um, other programs work better with those sorts of things. Now you need to be careful of this bit, 512 by 512. The size of this will depend on the resolution of the image. If it is too low, it will look a bit pants. Okay, so it will look very pixelated and you won't get the detail through. Um, so I would recommend stuff around the size of 1024 by 1024 if you've got things that are going to use detail like this. If you've just got a flat color, the size of that won't matter quite so much. Okay, and then you need a path name. So you need to choose where it is you are going to save it. I've already made myself a house test folder on my desktop. So I am happy for it to go there. Okay, and I'm just going to rename this house. Okay, because it's a really good idea to name your objects before you export textures. The reason for that is if I'd modeled house number one and I'd called it cube, and then I modeled house number two and it was still called cube. When I overwrote and you know did two different textures, if I was to then use and bake the second house, it could overwrite the textures of the first one because they were both called cube. Okay, so you've got to be very careful with that. So here we go. We've got our width and we've got our height and we've got our path name. So this is where it's going to be. So I select the object that I want to bake and then press bake. Okay, and boom, there you go. Incredibly quickly, we have our image. This is a its very own UV map, as it were. It's made its own one. In this instance, it's not done too bad a job. If you were going to be using more complicated models and you wanted to create your own UV map, then obviously you can do, and then you can bake the textures out and it would work with that. So now, if I look at my house, you can see it's gone very blurry because it's using that image. But if I just render, that would just be the preview and it will look much cleaner. Had I baked out the 512 by 512, this would look very pixelated indeed. So before I do anything else with my model, I'm just gonna clean up some of the stuff that I don't need. So I'm gonna clean up its tags and I'm going to remove unused material. Now before I export it, what I want to do is I'm going to add another material to the window. But I'm not going to make anything useful of it. So I'm just going to create a new material and drag and drop. Okay, And this one I'm going to call window. Now the reason for this is if you wanted that to have specific material properties in your games engine, then this should create what you need in order to make it work certainly in something like Unreal. So I have two textures there, okay, and I have my tag that determines which one goes to what, and I have my image and baked out. So if I went to my desktop, okay, you can see there I have my house test folder, and there is my color.png. Perfect, okay. So back into Cinema 4D, and now I need to export my model. So I go to File, export and FBX. Now I ask you to save it, what you want to call it, and I'm going to call it house.fbx, and I'm going to make sure that it is in the same folder as my house test. It's a really good idea to make sure that you keep your objects together so you know what is referencing what. And then click save. It will then bring this up. This is your FBX exporter settings. Now it will automatically come with 7.5, okay, it's a 2016 FBX version. I have found that Unreal certainly does not like this version and will not bring your textures across properly. Okay, um, so what I recommend is using 6.1, okay, and then using these settings. I'm just going to keep normals ticked, but ensure that you've got textures, materials, embed textures, okay, and substances as well. And then I will click OK. And there we go, it will have exported my um, house as an FBX folder. And if I just go back to there, there we go, I have my house.fbx. Marvellous. Okay, so let's go to our games engine and have a look. So this is Unreal. This is my Unreal and I've already created this little project and got this set up, surely so I can show you how to add content. So where you've got content, I'm just going to add a new folder quickly and I'm going to call it House, okay? And then I'm going to click House so that I know that that's the folder I'm looking at. Then I'm going to Import. 
and I'm going to make sure that I tick import house.fbx and click open. Okay, these are the majority of your standard settings. Okay, so I haven't changed anything. We've got import materials and textures, and then I'll click import. Okay, this is an issue that we are aware of with the smoothing. Okay, it's something that we are looking at. So I'm just going to close that, and here we have my house model. Okay, and we have our window and house. So now if I drag and drop the house. Okay, and then I can move it up. I'm just going to press E and then rotate. You can see that my model comes through with my texture on it. Okay, ooh, I didn't mean to do that at all. Okay, absolutely perfect. Now, as I've said, I've left the window texture there because what that means is that if I wanted to add in Unreal, you know, reflective properties to that, then I can do. Uh, that's not something that I'll be doing. You know, I'm doing Cinema 4D tutorials here, not Unreal ones. But just to let you know that that is a way that you can make sure that if you have specific areas, then this is something that you can do to apply that to your other areas. Okay? Right, okay, so that was Unreal. Let's try Unity. So we have um, Unity open here. And in a very similar sort of fashion, I can um, import a new asset. Okay, and I go to my house test and I go FBX and I shall press import. And there we go, it brings everything I need. And then I can just drag and drop that house right there. Okay, boom. And it gets my. Um, gets my textures in straight away. It's already registered the window shader there. You could also add metallic and things on there if you want to. Very similar, like I say, if you want to add in other materials or m different material properties to this, then that's something you can do in Unreal. Okay, there you go guys. I hope that was a useful tutorial for you for being able to export textures from Cinema 4D into games engines. Again, if you have any other requests, do please let us know and we will do what we can to help. I uh, hope this was useful for you and I will catch you next time.